Okay, hello, I'm Stephen Cook with Cook's All Manufacturing, and we're continuing our series on uh, prolonging band blade life on our portable bandsaw mills, or on any portable bandsaw mills. Uh, and today I want to talk just a few minutes about tensioning and, and the importance of that and, and kind of how, how it's best to tension and what it does, that kind of thing. Of course, we have a band blade on the mill here, and uh, we have a way to crank and, and tension this up, and we'll get a clip and, and show that a little bit. Um, but the first thing you need to know is you, could, you can't just jack a blade out continually because you will ultimately break it if you just really went too far. It is important to tension it the correct amount. And we have a, uh, I reckon you could call it a scientific way of going about that. Uh, different people do it different ways, and uh, but unless you have a, a measurement of some type, you're, you're really just guessing. And uh, we have a, a tension gauge uh, that we sell here, and I've talked about it some on other videos, but it clamps on uh, to the saw blade, and uh, then when you tension it up, you're able to know just by looking at this gauge on here exactly uh, the amount of pressure that you're putting. We put a little piece of paper in here so you'll know if you're in an inch and a quarter or inch and a half or two inch. Obviously a two inch blade is going to need more uh, pressure or can stand more pressure than a uh, inch and a quarter blade or a one inch blade. This has a little lever on it and it moves and it measures in PSI and, uh, and that's how we do that. When we clamp this on there uh, and we crank it out, we actually get a measurement uh, from this gauge. And so we know that, that we're going to be, according to which blade, 17,000 to 18,000 uh, PSI is the way that one uh, reads out. We've done this long enough, we know what it is and where it is. So once we have that, uh, we have mechanisms set in here uh, and, and we use a spring tension that pulls that out. And I'll talk about that more in a little bit. But the purpose of tensioning it, obviously if it's too, uh, if it's too soft or, or not tensioned tight enough, it's going to flex a lot. And this is pretty tight where we have that. Some people talk about flutter tests and all that. Those are just guesses that you're doing. You want it tight, but you don't want it overly tight. Technically, to some degree, the tighter you put a bandsaw blade, to some degree for short term, the better it saws. And so sometimes people just crank out on the blades and this is where the prolonging of the life comes in. Uh, they crank out on that blade and they make and cut and there may be a time when you want to cut at high speeds and just get done and, and go home for the day. But most likely if you're over tensioning the blade, uh, you're shortening the blade life. Uh, we talk about the blade uh, uh, build stress. The more you run it, the more it builds stress in there. And uh, if you're over tensioning it, uh, you're, you're pulling on that, putting undue stress on the blade, and it does shorten the amount of runs or the amount of sharpenings uh, that, you, that you can get. Uh, the other side, well, before I move on from that, if you way over tension it, uh, you can cause breakage, breakage of your uh, shafts and things of that nature can come into play. And, uh, but if you're, if you're in anywhere in the right range, that, that should never happen. Uh, but occasionally there are people who just jack that out with hydraulic jacks and different ways and, and they can actually break their shafts, which is not a good thing to do. The other side of that is to not have enough tension and it'll float. <laughs> Uh, and you'll have a hard time controlling that. And floating it will cause it, or, or up and down, people call it different things, will cause a heat buildup on that blade. You're better off to have that blade tensioned correctly so it cuts straight away in the cut and not go up and down. When it starts this weaving up and down, it's building heat, it's building it up inside the, in the blade itself, or inside the metal, so to speak, in the blade, and it's creating stresses and that shortens the blade life. So too loose is bad. So a little on the tighter side is better, but you need an accurate way to do it so that you know every time when you uh, tighten up that you've got the same thing. I was listening to somebody recently and they said, when you make a cut uh, to check it again and see. That with our tension, with a spring tension device, uh, that shouldn't be an issue, number one, but if, if he mentioned the blade would heat up, if your blade is heating up in the cut, 
it's probably a little not tight enough and you're getting this weaving and you're getting heat. Uh, but it should not, a blade that is running properly, uh, tensioned properly, if you, when you shut the machine off, you make a cut, shut the machine off so it's not turning and put your hand on the blade, it should be cool just like it is right now. Actually, sometimes it feels a little cooler because it's going through and getting a little moisture from the wood, I guess. But um, that blade does not run hot. I don't care if you're sawing at the highest rate of speed, this blade cannot get hot because heat does expand and causes that up and down. Uh, some people have, uh, for their tensioning, they have a jack bolt, we call it, and they put a wrench on it. They may try a torque wrench. Some people just tighten it up and they, they just fill of it to see if it flutters or this or that. All those are guesses. And the thing is, when you're, when you're running a screw into a nut and you're putting 18,000 PSI or thereabouts on it, uh, you begin to gall up screws. We found this in the past. And so if you don't have some kind of mechanism that uh, can gauge all of that, you may be using a torque wrench and it may bind out at, at, at 40 or 50 uh, uh, pounds torque. And, and you think you've tensioned the blade up, but, but all you did is kind of galled in, with the bolt. And so that's a problem. Uh, and we've taken a lot of time, spent a lot of time to try to get a tension device uh, that does a very good job. And we've been doing this for, for many, many years. And uh, we, we like the spring tension. Uh, that gives you a little bit when, of, of cushion. We, we've got a pre-rated spring. We pull and tighten up against the spring so the spring compresses and it gives you the same tension. We have a mark that we come to and we're compressing that spring a certain amount. It doesn't matter if your blade's a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. Uh, the way this is worked out, it always compresses that spring the same amount. And uh, that gives us the exact same tension every time. And there's no guessing, no guesswork. Uh, it's very easily to do just with a hand crank right here. You don't have to get out any uh, ratchets or torque wrenches or, or keep up with your tools. This just, just stays right on the machine. And you tension it right up, pull it to the mark. That's very clear and easy to do. And, uh, and you're ready to run. And it gives uh, the best blade life as opposed to just guessing at it one way or another or seeing if it's fluttering. If you're sawing and it's fluttering and going up and down, you're already beginning to, to damage your blade. So we'll get some uh, video or splice in some over on our, uh, our, our blade uh, tensioning device here. And, and you can see just how that works. That also gives you a little chance if, if something, <laughs> there is something going to go through sawdust usually, or uh, even a piece of bark, that spring gives you a little bit of cushion so that when it goes between the blade and the, and the band wheel, uh, it gives you that little bit of cushion and you don't lose that tension, you're still holding that tension, uh, but it keeps from being a dead tension, which you've got with those jack bolts. Uh, it gives you a little bit more cushion. All of these things, uh, and, and everything we do about our mill is try to promote that blade line. So hope this has been helpful to you and uh, we'll be talking to you again soon.